guys are outside. Oh, dude, after breakfast, I was so tempted just to go back to bed again. Because I read this thing that says um, that, like, your, your sleep schedule is actually overridden by your food schedule. So if you stop eating for 16 hours, and then you wake up and have a huge meal, your body instant re instantly resets, like, no jet lag at all. And I did it once um, in grad school, and it was so weird. It worked, like, perfectly. So when I got up at, like, 8 a.m. today, I had, like, nine salami and cheese sandwiches. I had so many sandwiches. I ate like 50 of them. They kept staring at me and saying things in Swedish. And I was like, well, American, I don't know. And I just kept eating. Like, did, did you notice in the, in the bathroom that there's like no like rack to put any like like bathing stuff? Because I, I brought my extra special uh, after hours Old Spice body wash. It has a very sort of uh, testosterone-y musk to it, I think. It really helps with the, the sort of aroma when I'll be around all the other nerds. Will be no doubt smelling that sort of like that muted bo. I guess is I think what I would call the gamer the smell. You know the kind of like I woke up at noon and didn't shower and didn't put on deodorant till like 9 p.m. after been sweating for most of the day. You know that sort of muted bo. That's undeniably gamer. So now we're gonna get into the unusually narrow elevator. We're on floor four, so I'm gonna reach around you. Yeah, reach Did around. You? I like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hit that button. Go. Oh my god. Yeah, I don't know why that is. Oh, I guess it's like... If girls can have slumber parties, they should. And gamers should be allowed to... Even That's a good point. Other. Yeah, I don't... I haven't been in a slumber party for like my whole life. Now, I actually spent most of the morning eating, so I'm just gonna go ahead and continue eating. Uh, See, this is, this is the real money food. Let me show you. I had about six of these this morning, so I've experienced... You get some of the mild cheese. Uh-oh. Come on. There we go. Yeah. And the other side is the salami. <laughs> yeah, this is, ah, this is this is the money sandwich, right? It has cheese and salami and bread, and that's it. That's all I need. Just my meat and my cheese. Okay, wait, get ready for it. Get in there. Mm. One of the more interesting conversations I had recently was uh, uh it was with a gentleman named Jay, who uh, does traditional television broadcasting, or just traditional broadcasting. So I think it encompasses TV and radio and all that jazz. And he was, um, he just offered to give me feedback. And it was kind of interesting to hear some of the feedback because a lot of me went, I know exactly what you're talking about for this thing. But like, I, I think that like live media is like, or in like live web media is like different. A real important rule of broadcasting is that like no one cares about the broadcaster. If I'm like a radio DJ and I say something like, all right guys, hey, we're gonna go into this song. Uh, it's kind of a sad one, which is good because I didn't really have a good day. Uh, you know, my refrigerator broke, and uh, my girlfriend, I don't know, she, her dog doesn't like me very much, you know, I'm like one of those things, it's like, alright, let's listen to the song, like, nobody cares. But I feel like a lot of the success of, like, the YouTube stars and the other, like, live stream folks is that they, like, do share that sort of personal stuff. It was kind of a funky disconnect. I distinctly remember the day where the Battle.net servers crashed during the beta, when I was doing a stream, and I was just like, gotta fill time, we have no idea when it'll be back, so... I'm just going to tell a story of what it was like when I first started playing StarCraft as a kid. And that video got such an outrageous amount of hits and so much feedback. So I switched the stream to be a little more personal. Because I didn't even try to be funny in the early days of the daily. Like, at all. I was like, hello guys. Um, I'm going to do a little analysis of this game. Uh, take it or leave it. It's, uh, I just think, uh, going to be a little bit of a useful angle of what occurred in this uh, the following match. It's a very super analytic total math mode. Um... But yeah, now a little bit more of myself always. That seems to that seems to be super lucrative. <laughs> that's where the big bucks are, baby. Right, we're living it up now. Yeah, that's why I got into gaming was for the money. It was doctor, lawyer, gamer. Those were the choices that my strict parents imposed upon me. Oh, this is like so awesome. What are you doing on the net there? Well, I was actually linking my friend to the mysterious. All right, hold on, let me. Open it up. The mysterious, uh, whatever the fuck it is. Uh, the mysterious explorations of Jasper Morello. It's this unbelievably awesome animation. I'm even gonna full screen it. Yeah, come on, come on. Yeah, City of Gothia. Oh, oh. All right, well, it's gonna restart. But it's like this really dark, um, steampunk style, like puppetry, 
animation. It's so nursing anything like it. Look at all those gears! Or the glare, whatever you're able to see. Yeah, it's just a short on YouTube. Just look up Jasper Morello. There's Jasper.